In today's video, we are going to solve a very cool functional equation. The functional equation states that the f prime of x is equal to f of 1 over x. And the goal is to find all the functions that are defined over the set of strictly positive number and that are differentiable. So the first thing we are going to uh, show is that f is c infinity. And a very classic way of proving this is by showing that because f is differentiable, then f is continuous. So it means that f prime is the composition of two functions that are continuous. So f prime is continuous, which means that f is c1, etc. And we can show by induction that f is c infinite. So in other words, f is infinitely differentiable. So now that we have proven that, we can actually go ahead and differentiate f as many times as we want. And we can write that f second of x is equal to the derivative of f prime of x, which is equal to the derivative of f of 1 over x, which is equal to f prime of 1 over x multiply by the derivative of 1 over x according to the chain rule, which is equal to f prime of x multiply by minus 1 over x square. This implies that x square multiply by f second of x plus f of x is equal to 0. So when I was publishing the teaser of this uh, new video, one of the followers of this channel said that he identified what is called a Cauchy-Euler equation. And it is true that this equation, at least this form of equation, actually is a special case of the second order cauchy Euler equation. So this was a very good observation and I thank this person for noticing this. And it turns out that you can find online the general solution of this equation. But instead of giving you directly the solution of this equation, which would be a bit boring, I'm going to show you an interesting way to solve this equation. So you may notice that in this format, this differential equation is not that easy to solve. We know how to solve differential equation that have the shape f prime of x plus ax multiplied by fx equals zero because it's a first order differential equation. But in the case of a second order differential equation like that one, it is a bit more complicated to calculate the solution. So there is actually a neat trick that is going to make this differential equation much easier to solve. So the trick we're going to use is to define the function g of t that will be equal to f of exponential of t. The function g is c infinite because it is the composition of two functions that are both c infinite. And we have g prime of t is equal to the derivative of f of exponential of t, which is equal to f prime of exponential of t multiplied by the derivative of exponential of t. So this is equal to f prime of exponential of t multiplied by exponential of t. And according to the functional equation we define above, this is also equal to f of 1 over exponential of t, exponential of t. So f of exponential of minus t multiplied by exponential of t. And the second order derivative of g of t is equal to the derivative of g prime of t, which is equal to the derivative of f exponential of minus t, exponential of t, which is equal to the derivative of f exponential of minus t, multiply by exponential of t plus f of exponential of minus t multiply by the derivative of exponential of t which is also exponential of t. This is equal to f prime exponential of minus t 
multiply by minus exponential of minus t multiply by exponential of t plus f exponential of minus t multiply by exponential of t. Note that the exponential of minus t and the exponential of t cancel out. So we have this is equal to f prime of exponential of minus t multiply by minus 1 plus f of exponential of minus t multiply by exponential of t. This is equal to minus f of 1 over exponential of minus t plus f of exponential of minus t exponential of t which is equal to minus f exponential of t plus f of exponential of minus t multiplied by exponential of t. Here we recognize the function g of t. And here we note that this quantity is exactly the same as that one, which is equal to g prime of t. So finally, we just showed that g second of t is equal to minus g of t plus g prime of t. So in other words, we have the differential equation g second of t minus g prime of t plus g of t is equal to zero. So in order to solve this second order differential equation, we have to solve what's called the characteristic equation, which is r square minus r plus 1 is equal to zero. To identify the root of this equation, we have to calculate its discriminant, delta, that is equal to b square minus 4ac, which is equal to minus 1 square minus 4 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 1. This is equal to 1 minus 4, which is equal to minus 3, which is a negative discriminant. So the root of this characteristic equation are r equal to minus b plus or minus square root of delta divided by 2a. And because delta is negative, this is equal to 1 plus or minus i square root of 3 divided by 2. And this implies that the general solution of this differential equation are the g of t that is equal to exponential of t over 2 multiplied by a cosine square root of 3 over 2 t plus b sine square root of 3 divided by 2 t. And remember that because g of t is equal to f of exponential of t, this is equivalent to say that f of x is equal to g ln of x. So this implies that if f prime of x is equal to f of 1 over x, then necessarily we have f of x that is equal to exponential of ln of x divided by 2 multiplied by a cosine square root of 3 over 2 ln of x plus b sine square root of 3 over 2 ln of x. Note also that exponential of ln of x over 2 is equal to exponential of ln of x to the power of 1 over 2. So this is exactly equal to the square root of x. So we can simplify by rewriting this term as being equal to the square root of x. So we just proved that if f of x verify this functional differential equation, then necessarily f of x needs to have this form. But this doesn't mean that if f is having that form, it will also verify the differential equation. So what we are going to do now is to inject this formulation of f of x into this differential equation to see if we can identify some condition on the constant a and b to verify this equation. So let's start with f of 1 over x. But first, as a quick reminder, we should recall that 
ln of 1 over x is equal to minus ln of x. And so this means that f of 1 over x is equal to 1 over the square root of x multiplied by a cosine minus square root of 3 over 2 of ln of x plus b sine minus square root of 3 over 2 of ln of x. We remember that the cosine is an even function and the sine is an odd function. So this is equal to 1 over the square root of x of a cosine square root of 3 over 2 of ln of x minus b sine square root of 3 over 2 ln of x. Now let's work on the derivative of f of x. So we have f prime of x that is equal to. So we just have to derivate uh, the formulation that is here. And we can use the well-known formula for the derivative of a product or composition of functions. So as a quick reminder, uv prime is equal to u prime v plus u v prime. And uh, u round v prime is equal to u prime round v multiplied by v prime. So let's apply this well-known rule to our function. And we have 1 divided by 2 square root of x multiplied by a cosine plus b sine plus square root of x. The derivative of cosine is equal to minus sine and the derivative of sine is equal to cosine. And on top of that, we know that the derivative of square root of 3 over 2 of ln of x is equal to the square root of 3 over 2x. So we can complete this formula, which is equal to a square root of 3 over 2x of minus sine plus b square root of 3 over 2x of cosine. We should notice as well that the square root of x divided by x is equal to 1 over the square root of x. So we can put 1 over the square root of x as a common factor. And now we are going to put the cosine terms together and the sine terms together. And we have a over 2 plus b square root of 3 over 2 in front of the cosine plus b over 2 minus a square root of 3 over 2 in front of the sine term. And because we have equality between f of 1 over x and f prime of x, then necessarily this quantity needs to be equal to this quantity. And that quantity needs to be equal to that quantity. In other words, we have the following condition on the value of a and b, which is that a is equal to a over 2 plus b square root of 3 divided by 2, and minus b is equal to b over 2 minus a square root of 3 divided by 2. We can simplify this system of equation by putting this term here and this term over there. And this is equivalent to say that a divided by 2 is equal to b square root of 3 divided by 2 and minus 3b divided by 2 is equal to minus a square root of 3 over 2. In other words, we have a is equal to b square root of 3 and 3b that is equal to a square root of 3, which is basically the same equation and equivalent to say that a is equal to b square root of 3. So in other words, we have the equation f prime of x is equal to f of 1 of x if and only if there exists a b such that f of x is equal to 1 over the square root of x of b 
square root of 3, cosine, square root of 3 over 2, ln of x, plus b, sine, square root of 3 over 2, ln of x. Note that we can rewrite this formula if we use a variable b prime such that b equal b prime divided by 2. And we have f of x that is equal to 1 over the square root of x of b prime square root of 3 divided by 2 cosine etc plus b prime 1 over 2 sine etc. We know that the cosine of pi divided by 6 is equal to square root of 3 divided by 2. We also know that the sine of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. And finally, we remember that the cosine of alpha multiplied by the cosine of beta plus sine of alpha sine of beta this formula is exactly equal to cos of alpha minus beta. So in conclusion, the solution of this functional equation are the fx equal to 1 over the square root of x b prime cosine of square root of 3 divided by 2 ln of x minus pi over 6. So, were you able to find this solution on your own? And could you even guess that such a simple functional equation would involve the square root of x, a cosine, the logarithm, the square root of 3 over 2, and pi? I find the solution of this functional equation very interesting and beautiful, but let me know in the comments below what you think about it.